Hey, Lizards, Gizmo here. I wanted to share some of the cigars we'll be smoking in June and July, so you can smoke along with us if you'd like. For Cubans, we've got Kai Dorce Coronas Claros, Partigas Series P number no. 2, Vegas Robania Unicos, San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta, and Por Laranaga Petit Corona. And for New Worlds, we've got Herrera Estali Habano in Robusto Grande, Opus X Perfection 888, Oliva V in Churchill, and Davidoff Millennium in Pyramid, with much, much more to come. Have a suggestion? Email us, loungelizardspod at gmail.com. That's loungelizardspod at gmail.com. And now, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Lounge Lizards Podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined by Rooster, Grinder, Senator Pagoda, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some bourbon, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 29th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a New World cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We debate this cigar's Cuban-inspired flavor profile, we share our appreciation for classic Maker's Mark bourbon, and we discuss the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, all among a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Maker's Mark 46 with Herrera Esteli Habano in Robusto Grande. A new world Robusto Grande tonight from Herrera Esteli, a Drew Estate Marca on the pod, a uh, 52 ring gauge by five and a quarter inch. I've not had one of these. Grinder, you brought these tonight. You're a big fan of this. I I was. I haven't. I, I was telling some of the other lizards in the in the burrow here, um, <laughs> in the I, lair, in the lair, <laughs> lizard lair. I haven't had a, a Herrera Esteli in a long time. But when they when they first came out in 2013, I was all about them. Really? Um, because it 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 looked at the time I was still like you know reflecting on visually like oh this is a lighter cigar i want a lighter cigar and i like this cigar because it was full fuller bodied had a lot of punch but it looked and felt smooth great construction and the size is pretty optimal if you want to like go out on the rooftop and you know smoke a cigar for 45 minutes it's great actually this smokes longer than that um I've always found, but I feel, I feel like it's it's well packed, but I feel like it's dense. So my perception is that is for its size, it is going to be a little bit of a longer smoke. Honestly, yeah. the, you know? the foot looks very very tight. Yeah, mine mine looks good. Like there's certainly air pockets in the foot, but yeah, it, it definitely is well constructed. I mean, it's, it's kind of shiny. You know, yeah, it looks it's nice. Like, like the seams are pretty much invisible. A tad rustic, but really beautiful. Yeah, nice and smooth. And this guy, Willie Herrera. Um, you know, I don't know how famous of a blender he was or is or has been, but he was brought, he was hired by Drew Estate and Jonathan Drew himself, I think, to really elevate some of the brand. And he just kind of, they just made this his own brand. Like we have a, you know, pretty well known roller coming out of Cuba. Um, and I mean, it's still, it's still a very good cigar. They, they make different variations of it. The wrapper smells great. Yeah, it's a Habano wrapper. Very nice. Ecuadorian Habano, I think. Is that right? That's correct. Ecuador, yeah. uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Uh, the binder is Honduran and the filler's Nicaraguan. All right, so it's not. And it's made Puro. in Nicaragua. It's, it's made not in, a Puro, yeah. Yeah, so it's made in the uh, Drew Estate factory there. Um, yeah, I mean, let's That's do great. it. Let's cut this thing, boys. See, we're getting on the cold draw here. You know, I, I find it interesting about Drew Estate, and we could talk a little bit about this. Wow. I don't know if you know more than I do, but draws oh, is wide open for as densely packed as this is. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I barely took off the uh, skin. I find it interesting that Drew Estate, like instead of calling this Drew Estate, you know, a cigar, like they have several markers in the Drew Estate, the Liga, you know, the yeah. Undercrown. It's interesting yeah, yeah. how he's built his cigar brand. Is not so much focused on him. It's these other. Well, it's it's an inverted pyramid pyramid of marketing because you're you're not marketing Monte Cristo the brand, you're marketing this very unique cigar. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> a little out of protocol over here. We're we're policing it. We're yeah. good. We're good. P- Pagoda Carry got on, a little. P- Pagoda was a little <laughs> quick on the trigger. Well, the cold draw is really interesting. Well, 
it's tobacco and cedar no. for me. I definitely get the cedar. Yeah. We got some dried fruit of some sort. Mm. Not mine. Raisin. Maybe raisin. It could be a little raisiny, a little yeah, fig. I, makes, I called I that out see. before. Yeah, I can see that too. Kind of a new world mm -hmm. classic, uh, new world cold draw. I'm very interested to see how this goes, boys. H has everyone smelled the wrapper of this? Yeah. It's very fragrant. It, it is. is. It's very, very yeah. fragrant. It's nice. All, nice. I, all I smell is the and <laughs> this hand sanitizer I just <laughs> flopped all over my ass. <laughs> All right, boys, let's light this thing. The Herrera Esteli. Esteli? Sure. Am I pronouncing that correctly? What, however you pronounce the Esteli Herrera region Est in Nicaragua. That's Esteli. how you pronounce this. The Habano Robusto Grande. I would say Esteli. Esteli. But I don't know these things for sure. Again, it's uh, 52 ring gauge by five and a quarter. Made in Nicaragua. Very interesting to see. I know, I know this is a very well-regarded cigar. So I'm curious how it does. And you said, uh, so this has been around, I guess, nine years now, right? So it, it came out originally in 2013? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You might have to fact check me on that. No, it's I'm true. I, I, I looked at that. I, I nailed it. Nice looking cigar. You did nail it. It's taking me a while to get this thing lit, though. Mm. A lot of tobacco mm. in here. Wow. Still, Still very good. <laughs> you know, I like it. Yeah. Right off the bat, I like it. I like it, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got a little sweetness right yeah, on the right right on very, the very comparable light. to a good Agreed. Cuban to me already. Let's that, not that, go too. Is far. that too audacious? <laughs> yeah. Let's not go too. Did far. you hear the silence after you said that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I I kind of feeling it. Like a cedary sweetness. Yeah, exactly. It's got the twang. Come on. The Nicaraguan twang. Yeah, it's got a Nicaraguan it's got twang. That volcanic ash. No, it's very cool. This is very good. Nice on the light. All right, let's rate it. <laughs> my draw is perfect. I would. I don't know if I'd say wide open. There's yeah, just mine's a touch, not wide open. a touch of resistance. Same, but it's really nice. I'll say sitting here, looking at the combustion, it's substantial. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah. Is it plumy? Yeah. yeah this is really good. Mm. I mean, what are they? Yeah, what this, kind of notes are you guys getting? I'm still. It's like it's earthy. Yeah. There's a little pepper in it and a little cedar. Yeah. I'm getting a, a lot cedar. of like. And Rooster barnyard. mentioned it. A little seed, a sweetness is there. Yeah, yeah. some barnyard flavors, yeah. some hay. Yeah, hay for sure. For me, it's like cedar, pepper, mm. and hay. Yeah, there's a little sweetness though. You can't discount that. A little bit. Like a little like I, I don't want to say caramel or honey or something. Just there's something there. On the initial light, yeah. there was. Yeah, it's a nice little cigar. Yeah, because the sweetness, to Rooster's point, like immediately on the light I got it, and five yeah. puffs later, now it's now like it's gone. completely gone. So, Grinder, how much are these guys? I just looked it up. They're uh, oh. about, they're a little under eight bucks. I was going to say, wow. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a little under eight bucks. Wow. Okay. You know, and, that, and that's, to Bar me. Bargain cigar. Yeah, yeah but it, it doesn't taste like that. No, not yet. It doesn't taste like that as of right now, mm -hmm. having just lit it. But. Did you say not yet? Not yet. Jury's still out. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I, I just learned, by the way. You I know, like that, Rooster? I know Drew Estate was purchased. I like that a lot. <laughs> but they're owned by a company called Swisher International. Yeah. Swisher Sweets. Swisher Sweets. Swisher Sweets. Do they make chocolates for you? Not for me. Not for you? Okay. I'm off the chocolates. You know that. I do. When did that happen? 18? 19? I think four or five years ago. Yeah, I think we paid Costco to stop selling those just so you'd stop eating them. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, I, this comes in a lot of different sizes, right? There's a Lancero, there's a, a Toro, there's a couple others, I think. I there think. Is. Yeah. Um, have you had any others, uh, Grinder, or just this uh, one? I had the Lancero with you guys. Were you there for Lancero night when I we was. did it? Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I don't think I was there. So uh, some of the lizard, I think it was me, Bam, Rooster, and Grinder did a Lancero night at one of our uh, former lounges, and uh, this was one of the Lanceros that we tried that night. We tried this. Um, it, would, it wasn't. It was a special edition um, Herrera Esteli, first of all, and we also tried the Oliva V in Lancero. That's right. And was there a third? Yes. There was. Uh, 
a dark one. That, that's like the one it. that won. Super flavorful. Um, oh, I don't was remember it a, that. Liga? Was it a Liga? I think so. I think so. A Liga, so, Liga, yeah. a Liga so Lancero. So two Drew and the Oliva. Um, Interesting thing about this I'm getting. On the on the initial draw, it, I get the cedar and a little bit of sweetness, but on a finish, it's all barnyard and hay for me on the back end. Well, this is this is very pleasant. Oh. I miss, I've missed this. This is great. Which I have to say, knowing your palate grinder, I can already see why you really like it. You yeah. love the barnyard. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I do too, from time to time. Very earthy. I mean, you can... It, it, I like these Habano wrappers that aren't actually from Havana. <laughs> um, H- 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 Habana shade wrappers. I've always found them very pleasant on every cigar I've had. And I don't know how much that it actually relates to real Cuban seed or whatever, but there is a market of these Habano or Habano like wrappers that are, um, that are out there. And this is one of them that, you know, it's just tasty. It's got that reddish hue, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, I've never, I haven't ever seen any of these cigars in any shop. Are they available? Seem like they are online, yeah, but online. I, I, don't, sell, I don't know if I've ever They sell out them. very quickly. Wow. Um, really? So are, are they as popular as say Liga? I think they are. I mean, yeah. they're very highly rated. So CA is all up in there. Yeah, CA loves the cigar. Um, and it's you know when you have a good cigar by a good maker and it's well marketed and it's appreciated by third parties, and it's available and the price is great, you can't like you're, it's going to sell. It's going to move. How many know? other vitolas do they have? He was just commenting. I think that. there's I don't four know. others. I see. I think there's five total, but. That is not a fact. I'm, um, I'm just based on what I saw online. By the way, this is the 15, number 15 cigar of 2021. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, this was in our list that Damn. we went through. So this specific Victola of mm. this specific cigar was number 15 in 2021. So for 8 bucks, you know, it's pretty uh, pretty cool that it... It does pack a it, punch for $8, delivered. yeah. I'm trying to feel like... Uh, I'm trying to, uh, from a comparison standpoint, you know, the Liga that we smoked... I'm kind of I'm trying to kind of map in my mind where they would both fit. In my mind, they're complete opposites. They are. Yeah, it's yeah. totally different. I mean, the rap. I mean, this is a Habano wrapper versus that Maduro wrapper. I mean, yeah. it's just so different. It is, and I'm just thinking, like, is this something to start your day with? Is this the second cigar of the day? Like, this, where, is a, this, is a, this is it. This is a this is a early afternoon post lunch. Yeah, cigar. Good. I don't think it's an early morning. I think it's too much. I do think there's too much of, of body for it to be an early morning coffee stick, you know? Midday is great for this. Um, yeah. It goes back to a comment you made in a previous episode about uh, body. And, like, uh. it looks like a light cigar, but it packs a lot. Yeah, I mean, I I've, as soon as I you handed these out, I said to myself, okay, this is probably going to be a very mild cigar. Right. And, yeah, I mean, just, you know half an inch through this, I would not start my morning with this, but afternoon, I think, like you said, would be a perfect time for a cigar like this. <laughs> that The two o'clock coffee that you need, you know? <laughs> two o'clock cigar. <laughs> two o'clock cigar, yeah. The, the Monty two. Yeah, the definitely Monty not an evening cigar. No. You know what? It's, it's For eight bucks, it's really well constructed. Yeah. It's smooth delivery of the flavor. It's burning great. Smoke out like, you know. I just don't understand some of these cigar brands selling twenty, twenty-five, thirty-dollar cigars, and it doesn't deliver what this does. You know, this is pretty good so far. Absolutely. Now I guess we'll see where it gets to in the second third and the last third, but this is this is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's got yeah. some spice. There is right? spice there. Yeah. I was just gonna say yeah. I'm catching some spice right now, and I'm yeah, like, there is some spice. Bit, two centimeters. Does taste down. any like nuttiness? Yeah. There's definitely nuttiness mm-hmm. in it. Yes. Like walnuts? Yeah. Because. Oh. I mean, the, the spice is dominating. You're dangerous. No, I just read it. You are dangerous. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Is it> really? <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here saying, I was like, I'll Rooster normally doesn't pull out this many notes. I was very impressed for a second. You, you could have played that. You could have played us for the rest of the episode. Now, you, now you have me questioning every time you actually <laughs> say, like, did he just read that? <laughs> um, yeah, this is really good. No, but to your point, uh, Rooster, this is this was much more barnyard. Hey, now it's like, you know, there's a little spice in it on the tip of my tongue. What kind of pepper would you say that is? is I mean, it a, like a black pepper, like a white. No, pepper? It's not, white, I'm not getting pepper. white pepper. Yeah, I think I'm it's not, a lighter pepper. Yeah, I'm getting like 
What kind of spice are you calling out? I'm getting more like Christmas baking spice. Mm. Okay. So like nutmeg? Cinnamon? <laughs> Wait, did you read <laughs> that? No, did you read that? <laughs> no, no. J- j- those are baking spices. <laughs> baking spices. I, yeah, I know, so but I'm just... Like holiday sus- spices. Little suspicious. <laughs> 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 I think you were reading about the wrong cigar there. <laughs> Take Rooster's phone away, please. <laughs> Yeah, just a quick question. When you say barnyard or hay, I don't know. For me, I got a little bit of the salty feeling, like salty taste. Sure. And is that what you kind of relate it to? Yeah. What, do, what do you mean by barnyard? Uh, I mean, it's hard. To, I mean, have me, you ever been in a barn? Yeah. Where it no. smells like, you know, horses and shit. I'm a city shit boy. And, shit. So, like, <laughs> I, when, when I say barnyard, I'm not exactly equating it to horse shit. But I am equating it to like a mustiness. Mustiness, musty, musty. is musty. probably the right word. And hay, there's hay there, and yeah. mustiness, earthiness, earthiness. And earth, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I felt yeah. a lot of earthiness I, with the saltiness. Now, uh, I kind of understand what you mean by that. Yeah. Yeah. But not, but but not necessarily. You know, some people may may mean directly horseshit. I do not. Uh, no, I'm we not, don't. I'm we not don't getting taste of like horseshit. the flavors of horseshit. That's horse a lot shit. of horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> Only the wizards call out the <laughs> flavor note of. Horse shit. Yeah. No, the reason I said, like, there are varying degrees of, like, that barnyard flavor that you would get out of a cigar because this is more my speed. Like, some cigars that have, like, a ton of barnyard notes, which is not what my palate likes. Like, like Grinder, that, that cigar, that Avo Domain you like, that's a lot of barnyard, which for me is too much. Yeah. Uh, but I understand, obviously, for your palate, you like it. Like, I equate that to, like, more of, like, a true barn. Like, all the smells, like, horse shit included. Um, we're Sweaty like, animals. <laughs> this is, like, the, like, very clean, pristine barn. Like, the a Cuban, horse hasn't been there in a few months. The Cuban sweat. <laughs> it's, a, it's a brand new barn. But the, the point that, um, that Pagoda was making earlier about the saltiness in this, I get some of that, too. And that goes back to, I think, on the light grinder, you said, oh, there's a little Cuban twang in this. And I think there's some saltiness that is reminiscent of that. I, I kind of agree because, you know, I was about to say say something, but I, I think with all the Cuban <laughs> of Shinadas over here, I think I'd be shocked. No, just let it fly. I, like, I, I said something earlier that I got a lot of crickets for. I mean, forget what it was, but don't be shy. No, I really liked it at the light, by let the way. Fly. Because, you know, like when I when I do smoke Cubans, especially the RAS, I've got a very similar burst of flavor which i said wow this is this could be really good and then right after that it just I, died i'm and getting it was like, so much flavor from this right now you know yeah, what this reminded me is, of like right on the light a little bit like the short the punch oh that's that's like that caramel sweetness that you get nuttiness mm. in the beginning and with you know with some like spice pepper now sure on the retro hill you get a little pepper yeah you know what I'm finding, though, is in the delivery of this, I'm kind of feeling this kind of has a bit of a, obviously, a Liga vibe, a little bit, and a little bit of a Tatuaje vibe. But the thing I, that I like about this versus some of the Tatuaje things is, like, there, there's, there's an essence of that, um, I don't want to call it Nicaraguan, I don't know what it is, but it's, 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 it, there's a little bit of an oomph to it when you draw it, but it... It, it's almost delivered in this creaminess that coats your mouth and there's a little sweetness to it that kind of makes it way more enjoyable and pleasurable to me than a lot of the Nicaraguans that, that we've tried and I've smoked. I think you've upset the right orchestra. I saw a lot of uh, disagreement. <laughs> well, I think when I said Tatuaje, sure. But, <laughs> yeah. well, I, mean, I, 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 I just like, I can't, I, can't, I can't even my, in a sane mind equate this to a Tatuaje or a Liga. Or at all. Liga. I, agree. Um, I think this is very Cubanesque. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Okay. I, agree. Mm-hmm. I think it's like very it's Cuban-esque. crazy to say that I, I mean, agree. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think maybe you're kind of right. It does have a little sharper edge than some of the Cubans we smoke. Sure but it does. Maybe that's owing itself to so, its Nicaraguan origins. But it's it's in just such a different part of the ballpark. It's if a different city compared to Liga. And uh, I'm just saying in it, it's, I don't know, it's in the same family. I, I don't know. But there's something, I am, I see the, the, the ties to... The, the cigars I called out. And you guys can tell me I'm wrong. That's I mean, fine. I, I You're don't, wrong. I don't get the Nicaraguan <laughs> flavors typically out of Nicaraguan cigars in this one. I mean, this Agree. is more, you know, you get, if you take the, the, the pepper notes out, 
this would be even be more Cuban, like a Cuban cigar. If you take the wrapper off, you tell somebody it's a Cuban stick, they would believe it's a Cuban stick. So that, I, that's a fair argument. I'm getting so you're gonna right? you're, you're this is when you're probably gonna shake your head at me. So I had a Mag Forty Six today. I'm getting more notes of Mag Forty Six in that spicy, what what I would say spicy Cuban cigar in this than I you know as a comparative basis than I ever would have thought. Like that to me is more native than anything legal would come out with. Okay. I, I see. As I, I taste this, I don't think I would Mag not 46. compare this to a Mag at all. Mag Forty Six, no. But. I mean, this is, it's just confusing me because I'm trying to be analytical and, and dive into it. I can't. Can you just say, put like, my yeah, I, mean, I think you're trying to figure it out. I'm just sitting here, like, honestly, just shaking my head in disbelief in the sense that this is like no other New World stick I've ever had. It's really true. I don't understand how uh, this even tastes this complex at this price point. I'm like completely confused and baffled by this cigar I, I in do, a good way. I do agree with that 100%. Are you saying, let me ask you a question. Let's say we could never, let's say our humidors were emptied tomorrow and you could never purchase another Cuban cigar, especially a Robusto. Would this be the cigar as of right this moment that you would say that is suitable to replace what I'm looking for it in a may, Cuban Robusto? It may be this. It could be the shark. That's one that I happen to. But the shark has no, it doesn't have Cuban point. scent. It, no, yeah, it's, yeah, putting, it's also a different price putting price aside. But I'm saying, like, from a Robusto standpoint, let's say you could never get another Cuban mm. and your humidor's empty. They're gone. Never, I, they don't exist. I think if you took the wrapper off this and you said this is a, I don't know, name your Cuban brand. You mean the band? Sorry. Yeah, thank you. The rap, the, the band, and did a blind tasting, you, I think you would be. Just as baffled as Senator is shaking his head right now, just be like, I don't know what this is or what to make of it because it it, it is kind of spooky how close the, the taste profiles yeah, are. I'm also just shocked by this because, I mean, like almost everyone in this room, of the New World stuff we smoke, it's mostly stuff with a darker wrapper. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So like a Maduro Padron, a yeah. Millennium Series from Davidoff, a Late Hour, those are all darker wrappers. With a specific flavor profile. Right. That comes at you. Right. And anything I've tried New World that has at all a lighter wrapper doesn't have a lot of flavor to me. It's very boring. That's why I always go for any New World. It's got to be a darker wrapper. I'm just shocked how much flavor I'm getting out of this where every other New World with exactly this shade of wrapper doesn't deliver half as much flavor. So I'm I'm very surprised and impressed. What's cool for me right now, I'm about an inch in, so I've lost most of the barnyard for me, but I'm getting a lot of the salt that Pagoda mentioned earlier. And it's it's really quite enjoy I'm enjoying it. It's very very good. Forget though, this is not this is not like a Connecticut shade natural wrapper. This is still a Habano wrapper. It's got this reddish hue to it. It's kind of more earthy, a little more volcanic. So it's not necessarily like that, you know, Ashton kelp kelp you know Connecticut shade wrapper no um, totally but eat what's eat, I'll even take this further some of the natural padrones right and padrones known for fuller flavor some of those natural padrones to me are like very yeah not all that flavorful from to me the um I'm getting a lot of flavor in this cigar. yeah it's interesting it's an interesting the cigar. smoke the smoke output you, is you know really which good. one I like you know uh to answer even your question on Robesto's is a new the Dominicana and the Davidoff. The Davidoff, yeah. You know, that's good. A little lighter wrapper, very flavorful. It's a great cigar. Yeah. That's Sorry, great hold cigar. on, hold on. The Dominicana has a dark wrapper. What does, are we talking about? It does Not have a dark well. wrapper. Yeah. 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 It's all darker. I had such yeah, a bad experience with that cigar. Really? 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 Oh. What? <laughs> what? It's becoming my new favorite. It was on Easter. <laughs> It was on e- the day, oh, the week before that's Easter. Right. Easter Sunday. I lit up a Dominicana and then we got inundated with. With uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Sicilian worry, I, mafia. I finished it for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sicilian Mafia, what <laughs> no, was that? at the clubhouse? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. But never, again. I'm sure it's a great cigar. Sorry, I digress. I think this is this cigar is settled in really, really, really nicely. Very nice. I'm, I'm shocked at the yeah. smooth delivery of this, the complexity. And what's cool is right as right on the initial draw in the front of the tongue, it's sweet. Yeah. And it gets salty as you bring the smoke through. It's really... Yeah, I don't get the sub- sweetness anymore. That's kind of... Uh, very it's, slightly. It's diminished. Yeah. It kind of has... And I, I'm not comparing it to a RAS, but it kind of has that thing that the RAS does where it kind of coats your mouth a little bit. 
like it, w- even after you 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 know you you push the air out after your draw, it kind of sticks with you. Like there's an oil. Yeah, yeah, there's like an oiliness to to the the roof of your mouth that it sticks with you in between draws. I think Pubo would really like this cigar. Listen, we got to do a blind taste. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> blind test on them. Just I'll put a rasp wrapper on it and see what he thinks. Yeah. No, I mean this is this is very very cool. I'm surprised that this is eight bucks. Shocking. Shocked. Shocking. All right, so let's try our uh, our liquor pairing tonight, boys. Makers 46. I have no idea what the difference is between Makers 46 and regular Makers Mark. I'm curious um, how this is going to pair with this thing, but what do we know about Makers 46 versus the normal Makers Mark bourbon? Yeah, so it's interesting. So from what I've read, there's really only two main differences between Makers 46 and the regular Makers Mark. The first is that the 46th is aged longer, which mellows it out while adding a lot more flavor. And the second is that seared French oak staves are seeped in the bourbon towards the end of its additional aging process, bringing out even more flavor. Other than that, it says, it's the exact same mash, same barrels, same wheat, everything. So those are really the only two differences that I think impart a I lot more flavor. Does, does that does that itself warrant a new branding for this bottle? <laughs> I don't know if it does. I mean, I will say though, it, it is definitely distinct from regular makers in that. Yeah, this is a lot more flavorful. It's and true. Like it's true. to me, tastes higher alcohol. Like yeah. this is. I agree. Got more I was going to say it, it's got a bit of a rougher edge around yeah. it. Yeah, you know the regular makers. Oh, it's so easy. So drink. easy. To so drink. this, drinkable. This to me is not pleasant <laughs> at all. I feel vindicated. I feel vindicated. There, I, there is. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not. I'm not digging it. This is not good. Mm. I'm not not digging it, but I'm not like. So, I'm glad to hear you say this. We may set a record on the low score tonight on a liquor rating because no. I am not. This is not good. What was the scotch we did? It was just trash. And we oh, that tra- was awful. Akintosh. Yeah. Oh, 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 was that. so bad. I'll call- never forget. Oh, that how was bad so that bad. Was. Let's Cough, see if we can beat medicine. the Akintosh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's shoot for low. I mean, this is just not good. I'm sorry. I'm I'll gl- take regular Maker's Mark any day. Thank you. So I'm glad to any hear you day. say this because I forget. I was in like some shitty bar once with uh, a few friends and there was like nothing that I would normally drink there. So it was just like some random, you know, bourbons. And I saw regular Maker's Mark and I was like, okay, I know this can't disappoint me. Like I, it's totally serviceable. I actually like regular Maker's. And I ordered that. And one of my friends who I guess fancied himself as a bourbon aficionado, he looks at me and he goes, well, well, Senator, there's Makers 46. Why don't you have the 46? And I was like, because I, I don't like the 46 that much. And I just to humor him, he's like, no, no, you, you got to try it. I said, okay, I'll give it another shot. I find it to be very, very aggressive. And I, what I like about aged spirits is usually it actually smooths yeah. out rough edges and produces a more refined product. And I find that with Makers 46, it like brings out these shocking edges that I never knew could yeah. be present at a maker's market. To me, you said the process adds flavor. I think the process takes it away. <laughs> this is, to me, it, I, I think this is an inferior product to mm. I agree, but when they're saying market. adding flavor, I mean, I agree with them in the sense that, like, this has a lot more body to I it. See. Like, this regular is, makers is kind of light almost this for a bourbon. This, yeah. this has a lot more body to it, but it's just too aggressive for it me. It tastes like a shitty Four Roses, frankly. It's oh. not good. I, it's not great. And I'll tell you, every time I sip it and then I take a draw of the cigar, mm-hmm. the cigar like relieves my pain of the, of the bourbon. Yeah. So maybe, I really maybe, hate this maybe bourbon. Maybe don't drink it. I'm thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. A glass of Woodford would be nice with this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, oh, this know, is... I think, I think there might be some Woodford at the bottom. In the room somewhere. <laughs> is it underneath your chair? Are you hiding it? <laughs> <laughs> this, um, I'll tell you, versus the... Uh, you know, normally we look to how the pairing is helping the cigar, vice versa. Not tonight, but that's okay. No. This, you know what? This pairing is making me enjoy the cigar even more. <laughs> not because of the not because of the bourbon. Right. I am out on Maker's Forty Six. I'm out. I'm out. Tell I, us how I, you really feel. Vehemently yeah. out. I'm going to walk out of here. You disavow. <laughs> I'm going to walk out of here. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, I don't hate it, but it's. I don't know if I've ever had it before I got this bottle. Really? So I was like, oh, 46. Let's do it. Let's try it. And then we tried it previously. Like someone busted it out at a previous podcast. And 
it was just kind of like meh, you know? Meh. Yeah. It's a lot of meh. It's very <laughs> meh. I think that's even kind. I really like this cigar. Cigar's great. I like it. I think I would definitely pick this up. I would too. Yeah. yeah. And we're only, what, coming up on halfway through, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think the first third of the cigar was better than it's now. I, I'm I in kind of the middle. Agree Honestly, I agree. I feel like the flavors to me are kind of a little off like a muddle. Little like it's yeah. not as distinctive as. And when I'm it struggling with it. I feel. I feel opposite. I'm in the middle right now, and I'm. I'm really enjoying it. It's very smooth. I and do cr- wish smooth and creamy. I do wish where we're at right now was mm-hmm. the beginning, and I wish the thirds were flipped. Like mm-hmm. I wish it kind of built into as opposed to fading. Because I agree with you, uh, Rooster. I think it started better than it is now and had it done the opposite i think we would be yeah, even enjoying it more point. let's see what the last third looks like yeah, we'll but see. on the other hand then puba would just put it out yeah he wouldn't be he wouldn't have oh, even smoked no. it no. well this is why you know sometimes we reserve certain cigars for certain scenarios when oh, certain oh, oh. <laughs> and, 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 and for certain people shank. is that what it is shank all right I get <laughs> it's not a shank it's just a statement of fact That's all right fair. he all probably right. wouldn't want to be here for it so, guys, I got to tell you about a book. So we talked about El Habano Moderno uh, in the past, which is a companion piece to the cigar website that we all reference for Cuban cigars, which is uh, cubancigarwebsite.com, which has all the possible info you could ever want about a Cuban cigar. But there's another book that's coming out. I feel like we're in the golden age of books about cigars right now. There's another book coming out. It's called The Cigar from Soil to Soul comes in two volumes really really nicely done it's by a guy named uh didier huvalganel um and it's coming out right now you can buy it um you can google it just google the cigar from soil to soul book and it's a cool reference book of the entire process of from the moment the seed is picked and planted all the way through the roll um a really really nice um i guess reference book of uh, appreciating cigars and what cigars are to people it's more of a philosophical discussion of cigar smoking as opposed to an analytical or scientific you know this is what it is and this is the size and this is the vitola and the marca this is more of a uh, i guess a discussion or a piece about um the experience of the experience of having cigars nice so i picked up a copy of this but I'm, i'm really really into it because um 300 pages 100 illustrations Six artists, um, you know, it, it says that the author takes the standpoint of a technical expert, an enthusiast, and a humanist to depict the life of a cigar from the first tobacco seed to the last moment of tasting. So I'm really, really excited to get this book. I just ordered a copy myself. Um, but it's, the presentation is really nice. It looks great. And it kind of covers everything. So if you're a cigar enthusiast out there, I love I love a coffee table book about a cigar. I love it. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just go ahead. had a revelation on the cigar. Yeah. So that Maker's 46 like completely singed my taste buds to the point that I feel like I couldn't <laughs> taste the cigar anymore. Did you drink some water? And now yeah. it's finally worn off and I've taken a few more puffs of this. Go now ahead, I'm Senator. getting go back ahead. the flavor that I had go early ahead. on. So I can see why Bam is saying He's enjoying this in the middle. This really is a lot it. better. I think this the the forty six bourbon really I, fucked my yeah. palate. How long have we been well, smoking this? Interesting. This thing. is not burning. About a half hour. Yeah, about that. It's that well, you know to to our point at, as we started. It's, to me, it's burning slower than I expected for sure. Yeah, it's packed. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. is. It but is. the it draw has is weight good. to it. But the draw is good. Oh yeah, yeah. I cut off Bam. What were you saying? It's all good. All right. <laughs> I was actually going to just piggyback on what you said, Rooster. The body of this really be- began bold and it, and it dissipated in strength, but the flavor for me is it's still quite tasty. All right, so getting back to this book that I'm excited about for a second, it comes in 11 volume, uh, excuse me, 11 chapters across two volumes. Very excited. Why are you guys giving me shit about this? <laughs> Get on with the fuck <laughs> obsessed with this book. Get over it. <laughs> it's very exciting. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this cigar. Jesus. It's Does it have exciting. an audio version? <laughs> <laughs> oh. all right fuck you guys i'm gonna enjoy my book and when i get it you're anyway, gonna walk out <laughs> i might i might walk out i'll just leave it leave it running are you gonna buy a signed copy i uh, well no i i ordered the uh the uh the, the really nice version i'm looking at, when is our book coming by yeah, the way yeah i like my book uh it comes in uh, el habano moderno comes in like october november Oof. oh my gosh yeah all right so all right. 
Yeah, this cigar is great, by the way. <laughs> Tough crowd in this room, boys. What else are you reading, Gizmo? <laughs> Every week I'm going to do a book of the week from Gizmo. <laughs> the, the, the lives of the Eastern Orthodox Saints. <laughs> a memoir. That's funny. I'm not a big, listen, I'm not a big book guy. But when something comes out about cigars, I celebrate it. You're a big book guy. Yeah, you're, like, you're, you're, are, you're always peddling books no, to I us. just I love a coffee table book. I love a coffee table book. I Which you it. don't read. No one reads coffee table. No, t- I have a, a cigar one on my coffee table. It looks great. The author has like this ridiculous name. It's like Barnaby Conrad III. I'm not even kidding. That's literally the author's name. And it's like an illustrated like history of cigars. So, like it looks great on the coffee table, but... I've never read the thing. It's I'm going to consume every page of it's this decor. Book. You're going to consume it. I am. I'm going to. I'm going to really. And then I'm going to give you a full book report. I like Kramer's coffee book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I think Barnaby's going to be my new nickname. Barnaby. I like that. Bam, bam, bam Barnaby. Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> the BBB. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> oh. Has anyone had to touch up their cigar at all? No. I did, yeah. It's burning a little weird. No, mine's my, burning not, great. It's not Mine, mine's, yeah, it's not razor sharp, but it's burning nicely. I had, I had to touch up a little bit, but not at all. It's fine. Yeah. I, I find I touch up a lot of cigars. It's frankly. Cuba being Cuba. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In Newark. <laughs> Just Newark being Newark. What can I say? Yeah, I, I, I find this to be a very, very pleasant cigar. And it's doing way better without the Maker's 46. Honestly, the cigar's me. got merit. You know, there's... For eight bucks, dude? Yeah. I mean, come on. a lot of merit. Awesome. I think Puba would really like this yeah, cigar. This so. is right in his wheelhouse. Yep. Yeah, for, for, you know, jokes aside, I think it would be a good one. 100%. Try. Absolutely. Do you think Puba listens to the podcast that he's not on? I think he refuses to listen to the ones he's not on. <laughs> so, like, we could talk. <laughs> we could talk about him openly. <laughs> well, if he is listening, we wish he was here. So, um, not to dive into a big sports thing, but uh, the NBA playoffs have been amazing. I'm not a big basketball guy. Senator is. Rooster is, but did you see John Morant? Yeah, it's just, amazing. It, it's been an amazing performance. He's a spectacle. The whole team, unreal. Yeah, it's been really fun to watch. Oh man, and baseball's back too, which is nice. I have a love hate yeah. re- relationship with baseball. I know some of the guys in the room are big don't, baseball don't guys. We all? I am not. Baseball for me is just when it's on and it's in the background. I'm into it, but I don't like seek out watching baseball. I know. Some I think of, you yeah. generally have a very short attention span with sports. This is true. Because you're it's, an Eagles fan, and I'm like, we're sitting here, and the Eagles are like fighting to get in the playoffs. They're about to make it, and you're sitting there completely disinterested. I'm like, because <laughs> I, mean, I know your team's about happen. to make the playoffs. He's, he also to confirm, likes, it's not a baseball team. Yeah. I mean, you have a you have a d- divided house. I mean, here we go again with the whole New York oh, sport you're team. You're a Dodgers bullshit. fan, dude. Oh boy, you're a Dodgers you fan. You can't just keep going back to the Dodger fan diatribe. Give me a break. <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> I mean. You're th- like you that's all you. That's your only excuse. Be, well, you want to guess? I'm an Eagles Yankees fan. You're a Dodgers Eagles fan. It's the same thing. Is it? Yes. That is enough. All this tells me is Pennsylvania is one fucked up place. <laughs> that's all I got out of this. How does that happen? I don't know. You know, I think baseball is a. It's what's interesting are the matchups. You know, so when the Mets play the Phillies, there's nothing like being on the couch. I'm alone watching that game. It's it's great. It's so relaxing. When the Yankees play at Tampa Bay, when the Yankees play Boston, those are awesome series. The yeah. matchups are what I think make baseball. Yeah, the division stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's such a great feeling when fall comes around. That too. And, you know, fall baseball, playoff oh, baseball. Dude, it's exciting. It's so yeah, Let's not awesome. get too fall. Let's enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. let's spring. enjoy the nice weather. Let's enjoy spring let's and summer. summer. The nice weather? It's fucking 40 degrees out now. It but, is. You know, next week it's going to be... By the way, I was we, we have mentioned this several times on the pod, and I'm saying it again because we need to do it. And this is a message for Puba, who's listening. We need to do a Bloody Mary Sunday. Oh, we've been talking we about that. We've been talking about this. 
We have done it several times without Salivating doing it on the pod. It. We need to do a bloody Sunday. Let's get it going. We got to do it. Giddy up. Because I am so in. I got the wife in on bloody Sundays now. What do you mean? You've, you've indoctrinated her to the She Dimitris. is so in on the Dimitris and the, the Sacramento tomatoes. Cool. Oh, yeah. Amazing. We got to do it. It's a game changer. We got to do it. Just think of how much we're influencers now. Mm-hmm. Are we officially influencers? Maybe to each other. We, when we get, <laughs> we're not getting paid for it, so <laughs> I don't think so. When we get the merch, that's when we... We've got to shake our asses a little more to make some money on that. Well, that's why you're here. Yeah. That's why Bam Bam's here. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that, and I deserve it. So this is starting to burn a little bit faster for me now. I don't know about you guys, but what, what do you guys think about the cigar right now? I'm still liking it. Yeah. yeah. Very consistent flavor profile. It is, yeah. What do you think, Rooster? I was really enjoying the first third. After that, it kind of fizzled off for me. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about what you said about makers? He, you know, he's not having any makers. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, it's a great value. I mean, for eight bucks, the amount of flavor that you get out of an eight dollar stick. I mean, it's. Yeah. 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 It's good. What yeah. other seven, eight dollar cigars do we love? And there are a few. Oh, like Papa's Fritas. You know, Spectacular. That, that small little uh, it's a oh, state. Let's not forget um, uh, the EP Creole, the El Senador. El, El Senador. Senador. That, that was is a great excellent. cigar. That's excellent. under 10 bucks. It was fantastic. You know how great hard cigar. that is to get now? So I go to local clubs. They've had it and they run out very quickly. That is a coveted cigar now. Really? I think it's because of the lizards. A small uh, Tatuaje. That petite petite Casadores is excellent. Yeah. That's a great cigar. Five bucks. That's phenomenal. Can any of you guys, I mean, Grinder is smoking this cigar, obviously. You know, he loves it. I don't know if you've smoked it in a while, but you like it. Can any of you guys see this slotting into any sort of a regular rotation for you as of right this moment? Nope. No, no. I don't know. Um, too spoiled. I'm surprised. We are Pagoda. spoiled. We're I'm spoiled, but also said no. we are spoiled. But also where it fits against Cubans, if you're going to make that comparison, like I'm going to pick any Cuban robusto, almost any of them over this in my rotation, and they're similar priced. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a once in a while kind of. I cigar. think it, I think it has a place for like, you know, a box a year, and you do it, you know, maybe once every couple of weeks or something like that. Sure, I you like know? that. That's mm-hmm. fair. You, you like know what I could see this working is if you're outside and you kind of want that Cuban thing, but you're smoking outside. Well, Grinder made a great yeah, point. On the I golf think course. Right after lunch, midday, I think this is a yeah. perfect cigar for that, mo- for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to try this outside because I'm not going to smoke many Cubans outside. So this may no. be a, a good fit for that, that spot. Well, I happen yeah. to think perfect cigar weather is coming. It, it is. is. Mid-spring is really spectacular. When there's no breeze, it's, it's, yeah. how can you beat that? I just love those summer nights smoking cigars on the deck. It's the best. I can't Watching wait. below deck on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have an unpopular opinion on this because I feel like there are some lizards that really like this cigar. I am amazed, as I've said, at like the complexity of different flavor notes I'm getting out of this cigar. But if I'm being honest, there's not a flavor note that's like drawing me or exciting me about this cigar. Um, I, I don't love barnyard and cigars, so I know that's like turning me off again. This is just my palate, what I like. So to your question of like, would I slot this in my rotation? Definitely not my rotation. And I'm not even sure anywhere, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's like, if I want to have a Cuban outside, it's a little windy. I would grab one of these, but I, I even, even a box a year sounds like a lot to me. Yeah. I'm in agreement, but I can't say that I don't like it. No, it's fine. I like the cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the flavors are kind of muddled now. You know, it's not it's not that distinct notes that you were getting in the first third. True. My cigar's burning all in different. Yeah. It's not the most pleasant experience for me. So I will say the spice is ramping up for me. I'm a little further along than most of you. I'm getting you and, some you and I are about the same. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. some pretty good pepper now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still enjoying it. But. Yeah. I got a question for you guys. Have, have, have you, has any of you been watching any of the clips or the actual footage of the Johnny Depp trial with mm-hmm. Amber Heard? I refuse. Yeah, a little bit. <sighs> yeah. I mean. Crazy. It is 
unbelievable. Just from the dynamic of what, what actually happened and what's going on to Amber Heard's legal team is just so amateur. It's comical. Um, so I, maybe I missed. Can you? What's going on? Fill us in. So long story short, <clears throat> Amber Heard accused pretty publicly of uh, accused Johnny Depp of domestically assaulting her, you know, domestic violence. And she went on a pretty public uh, rampage about it and wrote an op-ed, I believe, in the Washington Post. I believe that's where it was posted. And he has sued her for 100 million bucks for defamation because it cost him. I thought it was like 50 million. I thought it was 100. If, even if it's 50, whatever it is, it's crazy numbers. But he is suing her because, because of the, uh, the circumstance of, of being accused by a former female partner of domestic violence you know, just in, in the accusations, lost several franchises. He's been of work. canceled, yeah. Several franchises of work. I mean, he, Disney wants nothing to do with him. He got kicked out of the Harry Potter thing. Um, anyway, so he's suing her for defamation. So this is a trial that's being held in Fairfax, Virginia, and I think that's because that's where the Washington Post is actually published. Uh, that uh, you know he's suing her for that that defamation, but the trial is. Um, Unlike anything, maybe from a public uh, public standpoint, like an OJ type of trial or uh, the woman in Florida who was accused of uh, acquitted of, of killing her child. I forget what her name is, but I mean, it's aired every minute of it is aired. Every second of it is aired live on television. And her legal team is so amateur. It's comical. Like the clips that are coming out on the Internet are wild, wild. I mean, to the point that. They had a forensic psychologist on who purchased who purchases muffins for her office every day. This is what she does. And I guess the legal team dialed in that one day she was running late and had her husband purchase bring, the muffins for bring the, the muffins office. to the trial. This, the, the, this is a muffin. They had a whole day on muffins <laughs> in this trial. And the, her legal team was so adamant that this woman's husband, this forensic psychologist's husband, was purchasing the muffins for Amber Heard therefore coloring the validity of her testimony. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. This whole thing is crazy. Check out the clips. So who, who's, who's, who's the amateur? The, the Amber Heard's Amber, Am- Amber Heard's legal team is amateur. It's crazy. Yeah, amateur bullshit. It's crazy. I just, yeah. the crazy thing to me, I, I haven't followed this closely at all, but just like the little snippets that I've seen here and there and other people talking about it, this is the most fucked up marriage I've ever heard of. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's oh, like yeah. awful. The amount of coke that guy does is hilarious. Did, did you see the coke? The, the coke. For, forget that. Did you see that supposedly his wife took a shit? Yes. On their bed. On the bed. Yeah. And left it there for him. Like, yeah. And then blamed what? it on the dogs. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's wow. crazy. Psycho. Is it's that, like a movie. This, are are they actually talking real. about that at the trial? Oh, they did. They went through the whole thing. Yeah. Oh man. It's psycho shit, man. That's actually good entertainment. I think there's a photo of it even. Yeah. There is a of photo. the yeah. of the pile of shit. Yeah. He took a photo of the shit. That I she went, left on the bed. She also threw a bottle of vodka at him and severed, and his, severed finger. his finger. Yeah. Right. Yep. Wow. So it, it, it's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting. Uh, I guess given the time of the Me Too movement, which so much of that was valid and and accurate, but you know what's unfortunate in this situation is this woman playing on that to accuse someone inaccurately of domestic violence, given the cultural circumstance of domestic violence and me too johnny depp being canceled seemingly i'm not on the jury but seemingly inaccurately and unfortunately um it, it's it's crazy it's crazy this this whole trial so you know it's funny though johnny depp is never going to restore his reputation no matter what the outcome of this is and that's what that's like that's the whole shittiness of the you know, the that's reverse how, me too. That's yeah. how powerful yeah. an accusation can be. Absolutely. And it's unfortunate because, you know, I've seen uh, takes from other women who have said to, that, you know, uh, she's in, in, invalidating a lot of, you know, valid claims, accurate claims of, of women who have actually been abused sure. as opposed to women who are actually the abusers. Yeah. Which seems to be the case. Again, she I'm not on the jury. She's like a but, fucking terrible person. Yeah, she's frankly. a psycho. She's psycho. That's my opinion, but. 
She's got she's someone. So, someone said, uh, clinical psychologist was was commenting on this and something I was listening to, and he was like, honestly, this person Amber Heard has all the makings of multiple personality, you know, disorder. Yeah, and and yeah, the I mean, forensic she, psychologist did say that. Yeah, she's not even a good liar. I mean, did you see like one of the smoking guns in her testimony? This is like one of the biggest things in this case. She was talking, I guess they were tell, asking her to like prove that she was like physically harmed by him. You would presumably have some bruises, something like that. She's like, oh, well, I had bruises on my face, but I used to wear this specific concealer to hide it all. And she named the exact concealer that she claimed she wore every day. And the to attorney hide held this. it up. And the company that makes that concealer said that they didn't even start making that concealer until years after she's claiming she was being abused. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's after just, the marriage ended. After wow. the marriage ended. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's a liar. Amateur bullshit. It's like crazy, so, that, so that defense, that I guess not defense attorney. Yeah, I, mean, I guess he's a defense. He should be doing his homework and be yeah. like, okay, if we're going to, if we're if some credibility is vested in this fucking lotion that you're putting <laughs> on your face, maybe we should do a deep dive as to, you know, the validity yeah, of or the maybe state. you shouldn't say the name of the thing that you're putting on right, your face. Exactly. You just say even I better. put some stuff on my face. <laughs> Not thing. even right. the name, Senator. She was the, the attorney was holding it up. Like this is the one. Oh. And then the company said out came out and said, Yeah, we didn't release that until after their marriage <laughs> ended. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. It's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. Does she have that kind of money though? No. I don't know. I mean, no. it certainly seems like the legal team she hired. It doesn't seem like there's much there. So no, I think he's making a point. She does not have that yeah. money that he's yeah. suing her for. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, anyway, back to our uh, cigar and bourbon. I guess let's talk about the bourbon. I mean, yeah, are you guys ready to do a formal liquor rating on this thing? Sure. Oof. I I don't even know what to give it. Normally, <laughs> I, I I know I know kind of a range. I have no idea where I'm going to land here. I I got to figure this out. I mean, it's okay. I'm 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 going to give it a six. I'm not going to disrespect Maker's Mark. I'll give it a six. Okay. Pagoda. Six. Six. Senator. Five. Five. I am all day, without question, totally fine with giving this thing a four. <laughs> it is one of the worst liquors I've oh, ever wow. had. Five. Five. All right. The formal liquor rating on Maker's 46 is a 5.2. Okay. A... Absolute not recommend. No. Yeah. <laughs> Hard pass. We do not recommend that that bourbon. Yeah, that that is just couldn't be more disappointing. Terrible. If I, I will never have that again. I will never buy it. I will never taste it. I will never take it from a friend. I'm done. <laughs> we got makers. it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you don't like it? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. It's horrible. So maybe once you try it again? <laughs> <laughs> maybe in a blind test. A blind. Let it age for a while. <laughs> age. Unbelievable. All right, boys, we're coming to the last third here of the uh, Herrera Esteli in uh, Robusta Grande. What's everybody feeling about the last third? Oh, it's still very good for me. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty consistent to where it was. I think the first third was certainly better. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I I don't hate it. No, I think this is a very, for eight bucks for what it is. You know, I don't know where I'd slot it in my rotation, but mm -hmm. it's a very fine cigar. Yeah, I'll I be think, honest. I I just got bored of it. That's my take. Okay, I think it's a knock around cigar. You know, yeah, it's not good, it's not so bad. It's a good knock around. Yeah, that's that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Pagoda, what do you think of it? Oh. um just didn't enjoy it i it's one of the very few cigars i've just not been excited about meaning i've i've had cigars which i haven't liked but i've kind of finished them this, i just couldn't do it yeah there was one other cigar you couldn't finish that was it recalls yeah. from my memory which one hmm. was it the began, hoya maybe began, began with a p placencia <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah but but but, that, but I think we we got to definitely do a do an episode of podcast on that for sure. Count me out. <laughs> We're gonna have to rate one at some point. We are. Yeah, they're popular. Which placenta? Can we do? do? Can do? we do an informal lizard rating? Oh no, this has to be formal. It has to be formal. Yeah, right. unfortunately. Oh man, are we ready? I'm ready. Rooster, go ahead. All right. So, the first third was pretty good on that steak. I mean, keeping like the price point out of 
you know, not even talking about the price point. The first third, I mean, it was promising. I thought the cigar started out great. I liked the sweet notes on it. Uh, had some spice. It was good. But after that, I mean, it, it just didn't do it for me. So I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Grinder. Womp. I'm giving it a seven. Seven. I am also going to give it a seven. I'm at a six. I didn't even finish it. Pagoda. Five. Whoa. Bam, bam. Oh, I'm hovering between a six and a seven. One more puff. Hold on. What was so bad about it, Pagoda? Because I was surprised uh, by your surprise. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed, like, I think, uh, similar to Rusa, I enjoyed the beginning. I think it w- seemed very promising. I liked a little bit of uh, the saltiness, the earthiness. Um, and then it just, for my cigar, there was not a lot of smoke output after the first third or even the first quarter, it seemed. Um, you know, it was, uh, I had to touch it up, um, just did not smoke well. And then it's one of the very few cigars that have actually just not completed the last third. So yeah, meaning it just, maybe it was just this particular stick. Um, maybe yeah. I'll try it again. Uh, but it's not one of those cigars I'll go and purchase by any means. Yeah. yeah the burn wasn't good and had a couple of cracks, like as, as I was smoking, yeah. the wrapper it, like cracked. Correct. A couple of spots. Yeah. No, I didn't get any. I of didn't that. experience that. No. Mine, mine was fine the so whole way. I, I'm gonna. I'll give it a seven. Seven. Yeah, because okay. I I did like it. Really, I'm at a point now where it's extra spicy and tough to finish. But not a bad cigar. So the composite lizard score on the cigar is a six point three. Okay. Pretty. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's kind of in the kind of right in the zone of where it where it should fall. Yeah. Knock around cigar like Grinder said. Yeah. For yeah. eight bucks, I mean, it's totally fair. Yeah. So what would we call that? Would you call that a uh, soft recommend? Would Maybe. you call it a neutral? <laughs> we didn't, we didn't love it. it. We didn't hate it. Yeah, I would say. I would say try it. Recommend. Yeah, you for know, eight bucks, that doesn't mean one. it's like the best ever. Just, yeah, give it a try. You know, and, and for somebody who has a, a palate similar to Grinders, this might fall right in their wheelhouse for, you know, an eight, under $10 cigar. I mean, it was number, what, what did I say, number 15, 15. last year? Wow. In Cigar Aficionado. So that's ridiculous. That is surprising to me. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's surprising to me for sure. So, all right, boys. A six point. (laughs) Wow. You're running out of gas. I'm running out of gas. I mean, the the makers in this. I mean, I don't think we've ever had a pod that everything was under a six. Six and under, excuse me. 6.3 and under. But uh, yeah, so a 6.3 for the Herrera Steli in Robusto Grande. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, loungelizardspod, P-O-D. That's loungelizardspod at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.